Read the first card. All right. First okay. up, we got okay. Armored Armadillo. For a white, you get a 0-4 with Ward 1, but you can pay 3 and a white, which is 4 in total. For it to get plus X plus 0 until end of turn, where X is its toughness. Mm. You're picking up on the, the mic. <laughs> oh. If you don't want to. Hi. What, 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 what did her want? What the fuck did her want? No, 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 no. She, she's just saying armadillo and stuff, because I, I don't think she thought she was picking up on the mic. <laughs> <laughs> she was, she was. Hello. Okay, okay. Sorry. I'm sorry for <laughs> keep going. <laughs> this no. <laughs> uh yeah, I mean, whatever. It's like a zero four for one, I don't care about. I guess it can be a four four for four mana. What is the place for this guy? Armored Armadillo is probably at its best in blue-white, so you can activate its ability to tussle in combat and then not cast a spell for the turn. Yeah, I mean, that, is that good? No. That's, <laughs> I, mean, that's, I don't think so, but you, you keep your own opinions. <laughs> that seems horrible, yeah. That, I mean, maybe I'm... Maybe you're wrong, but... Uh, that does seem pretty horrible. What, you... No, no, no! I don't want this card. I, I'm on a, I'm on a D. I, I, I don't want this, and I don't see I'm why. I'm on a D as well. D? Yeah, I don't see why. Hopefully, it's gonna be better, better than what I think, because that kind of means that you, you're gonna have this kind of slow white deck. So that would be cool. I mean, it doesn't even block particularly well. Like yeah. you can wrap around this pretty easily because you have to pay four mana to threaten to eat something. Yeah, and also. Uh, Mercenaries can just like push certain sized attackers past it. Yeah, I don't Rough like life. I don't like these zero powered creatures unless they're incredible. Bridled Bighorn, three and a white, four mana for a creature sheep mount. It's a three four with vigilance. Whenever bridled bighorn attacks, um, while saddled, create a one one white sheep creature token. Has saddle two. I don't know if we. Well, I guess we, whatever, even if we mentioned last time, we should probably touch on it again. Um, really common play pattern for these is that you drop this on, well, whatever, on turn four, for example, and then you can play your five drop and saddle Bridal Bighorn immediately, right? So you're essentially getting the effect out of your creature, even though it has summoning sickness. Kind of like how vehicles worked. Um, but this one, you only, you only get like an additional one one. This is fine. I think um, I'm not particularly high on a four mana three four with vigilance that's like okay i actually do like vigilance with saddle specifically because saddling requires you to invest a lot more uh resource or a lot more of your board presence into committing to an attack and the fact that this has vigilance and also creates a one one that can block means that your blocks actually won't be that bad even if you do saddle so that's like not bad uh if you are somehow able to do this twice then the sheep can start saddling the bighorn itself, which for fla flavor flavor purposes is kind of weird. <laughs> but sure, we'll do that. Um, it's okay. I think this card an okay. I think this card's like a totally okay four drop. I don't think anyone particularly cares about it. Even like the mount, particularly mounting aggressive decks. I think this card is like fine in. It's not. I think it's pretty replaceable. It's like a D plus for me. I don't know. I like it. I think this is the one kind of uh, you know the orders of guy that cares about tokens. Whenever you get a token, you make another one one life linker. It's this kind of but all mm. this kind of good way to do it. But the problem is both of them cost four mana, so the curve is kind of weird there. Um, I don't mind dropping Bertram on turn five after this. That seems that seems totally fine to me. Yeah, that does seem pretty good. It is a little weird though, but. <clears throat> It's like whenever you have like, whenever you are kind of comboing two things that cost four, that's never great. Yeah, it's, it's, not, it's certainly not ideal. Yeah, that, that you, is you'd never rather great. go four into five. Yeah, it's like it's not like oh man, this guy curved out. No, it's like oh they're doing something, kind of later in the game. This is manageable. Um, I want to see minus some cave. It is, I think it's fine. I mean, vigilance is alright, I guess. Eh, it's fine. It's fine. They do need to take care of it, so the tricks are going to be real nice with this, I guess. I don't know. It's a fine forger, but nothing too special. Ariat's Lullaby. Lullaby. 
For one and a white, destroy target cre tapped creature, you gain two life. It's a sorcery. The two life is huge. <laughs> you kind of want this to be instant, but two life is huge. You're saying there's like white cards that are kind of, maybe kind of better in uh, slower decks. What do you think, Scott? Like is is white gonna be fine being in the slower, being a slower color? Because I don't really see much late game for white uh, on common level. Um, I, I think that's okay. Not having particularly great late game in supported common, especially supported by you know the higher rarities that we see nowadays. I think that's all right. I don't think that's like a death sentence. I don't feel like I was finishing off many of my games with a uh, hot shot investigators. You know, in in MKM drafts. Wait, what is hot shot investigators? Is I that... think the the four four six drop the bounce they that bounce I liked and you didn't, and then I ended up not liking it. Yeah. I don't like this much. If it, if this was like, if this was in um, maybe in blue. Of course, it's never in blue, but uh, maybe in black. I think maybe uh, black has some good early game, I guess. But I don't see much <laughs> late game for white, so I'm gonna start it as a D plus. Like two life is huge on this effect, but because uh, the problem is always. You cannot kill what you want right away. You gotta wait for it to attack. Then you already lost some life. Like this, at least, like you're gonna get some life back. So that's 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 a big deal. It would be just complete garbage, I think, if it didn't have two life gain. So D plus, I think it's okay. Yeah, I like a D plus grade for the lullaby. Um, I don't think the two life exactly offsets. Like I guess the joke here is that you can take the hit and then gain a little bit of the life back. But these cards are always particularly awkward. I am looking at the common white tapper that could potentially kill something that you need to. For example, a vigilance creature. But also that card doesn't hit mounts, which is kind of tough. But I'm also in a D plus. It's not very good. Holy cow. Two white, three mana for an ox angel. It's a two two with flash and flying. When holy cow enters the battlefield, you gain two life and you scry one. This has a lot of text. This card has a lot of text. This is like the most text on a Windrake. <laughs> yeah, that, that is the um, most text. So Windrakes are not great anymore. <laughs> like a 3 mana 2-2 two, two flying, that's that's a little bit outmoded. But we're attacking on Flash, gaining 2 life, and Scry 1. That's that's enough for me to like this card. Um, I understand the stats are still a little bit under. I don't think this card's absurd despite this amount of text, but I, I think it's a totally solid role player. Um in blue white, you can like pass the turn, enable your stuff that doesn't care about or that doesn't want you to be casting spells in your turn, etc. Um, you know, like I'm I'm pretty happy flashing this in and trading off with my opponent's two or three drop. I think that's reasonable, and I'm okay just flashing this in and pressuring my opponents. I'm I'm totally overall seems super solid to me. It's a C plus. Oh yeah, yeah. They, I thought you were gonna give it the lower grade when when you started talking about it. Yeah, this like two life scry one is. It's pretty big on a flyer, right? You're, you're sacrificing some stats for evasion, as always. But you make it harder for opponent to race you. <clears throat> and this seems really good in um, blue-white, where you're trying to do things, uh, not play things on your turn. Like I think this is going to be pretty important. It is a 3-drop, not a 2-drop, so can't put that many in. But I think you can have a lot of holy cows in your deck and feel really good about it. Um, yeah. Hmm. yeah I'm, Give holy cow a grade. I'm okay with C plus. I'm actually okay with C plus. All right, holy cow. That's a holy lot. cow a C plus. Hmm. Inventive wingsmith for two and a white. It's a two four. At the beginning of your end step, if you haven't cast a spell from your hand this turn, and this guy doesn't have a flying counter on it, put a flying counter on it. So two four for three, not good. You. Don't play anything, it becomes 2-4 flyer, without Vigilance. I mean, that's nothing special. That is really, really medium, I think. A very, very medium. That is so medium, man. It's a <laughs> The reward is not there. <clears throat> nah, no, no, man. Maybe Vigilance, maybe if it had Vigilance, then... It would be something... I don't want to work for my 2-4 flyer for 3. Man, I'm on a D minus for this, and I think this is complete garbage. 
Okay, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not quite that low. I, I think uh, three mana, two, four flyer. Uh, I don't think it's actually that difficult to activate. So I think it's going to be uh, two, four flyer more often than it isn't. Uh, I'm, I'm okay with this. This is D plus for me. Yeah, I'm going to move it to a D. Like, <clears throat> if I gave Armadillo, Armadillo is going to be a D minus, I think, for sure. Yeah, move, move, it, to, move it to a D. <clears throat> For me as Do you well. want to move Armadillo down to a D minus? Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. <coughs> God damn it. Do you need a cough drops? I can I can send a cough drop over the internet. A cough cough drop? Yes, cough drop. Oh, that's like um, a little uh, candy. You don't use cough drop. You don't. Is, do you not call them cough drops where you live? We call them. Uh, we don't really have a name. Lozenge. Th that's like. A little candy, right? Yeah, you don't use cough drops yeah, in but we Croatia? Call them, you know, we call them by the name of the... We, we call them Septoletta or Sept Streptils. Oh, the brand. Yeah, Is that's the brand? The, I don't know why, but that's how, how we call them. Oh. oh so, you know, <laughs> so, so you call them just candies and then you call them by the brand? That's so interesting. No, it's like Septoletta, Streptils. Huh. We don't call them candies. Okay. It's the it's, it's oh. same for... Um, for I don't know why, but here for quite a lot of things, um, there is, <clears throat> you know, the, uh, not the lipstick, but, uh, you know, the lip balm or something like that. Yeah, lip balm. Lip balm, yeah, we call it Labella because that was like the first brand that came. Uh, oh, wow. So you're consumed by capitalism. I yeah, see. yeah, yeah. And then, then the calculator, we call it, uh, a lot of people here call it Digitron because that was like... Again, <laughs> you you don't you don't even call them calculators. Uh, I mean, I I call them calculators. That's so wild. Uh, uh, what that is? That's wild. That's crazy. Yeah, that is actually pretty weird. I kind of uh, believe yeah. that everybody's doing it, but uh, in Italy too. Oh, in Italy too. There we go. I, I don't know why we do Gosh. that. It's like we have a name for these things. <laughs> we do have names for these things, but we just call them. <laughs> By the first brand that that came that came here, there's imagine so imagine in the U.S. we call them Texas Instruments. Te <laughs> I'm gonna whip out my Texas Instrument. That's like that's the brand that you got first. Yeah, TIs. Oh, not first, but it's one of the more popular ones. One of ones. the more popular. TI. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's it's a little bit weird. D minus for Amardillo, D for this one. Okay. All right. Back back on the nonsense. We had to we had to derail at some point. This How is good. This is good. I'm drinking my coffee, uh, like to fully wake up. It take, it takes a little bit of a time to get my engines going. So this talks uh, this talks help. Go. Uh, am I reading this mystical tether? Uh, two and away three mana for an enchantment. You may cast mystical tether as though it had flash. If you pay two more to cast it. When Mystical Tether enters the battlefield, exile target artifact or creature and opponent controls until Mystical Tether leaves the battlefield. Seems fine. Obviously, the five mana mode is meant to help you not cast spells in your turn. Obviously, it can surprise something in combat. Uh, the five mana version is obviously extremely clunky, but having the, the um, alternative mode of just casting for three is nice. Seems totally solid to me. Like, to totally solid. A sorcery speed exile that can potentially be freed later in the game by like a disenchant effect or whatever. Um, it's okay. I think I think this is totally surface support removal. I think this is a C plus. Like for for reference, I think that uh, the flash for extra two mana matters a lot less for it than for example, makeshift binding the last set. Like gain two life was huge. Flash is fine, but it's a C yeah. plus for me. It's nice that it, it's it's nice. It's like you sometimes you just have more mana. And then you can use it ex uh, uh, at any point, not not just in blue white where, where you care about um, not casting spells on your turn. Um, this is anything, right? Ar uh, no, it's artifact or creature. It's artifact or creature, yeah. They mm -hmm. they don't want they don't want mystical tether loops anymore. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, that, that that does make sense. C plus is. Hmm. I mean, I think this is the best removal white has, so... How many? There are some things that just randomly kill enchantments. No ward. I'm on a C. I'm on a C for this one. I think it's fine. Nice. <clears throat> I think it's okay. I like it. All right. I like it. Down, down with the, the, bread, the bread kingdom. 
The bread, yeah. The bread oh, is no longer. Oh. Yeah. Him and I gotta make the episode. Uh, he's uh, about bread because we don't believe in that uh, really. <laughs> you don't believe in bread? Yeah. What about all the bakeries? What do you think they do? No, 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 no. gluten free. Well, I guess there's gluten free. <laughs> no, <that's laughs> Outlaw medic for a one and a white. It's a one three life linker. When it dies, draw a card. Yeah, this is the thing that I'm looking at. Like, white ha has some of the some of these things that are not very aggressive at all. Like, this is, doesn't settle, doesn't attack well, but it's a really nice guy. And um, even as even when, at one point, if you're going to be chum blocking, your opponent is going to be using a trick. You're so happy. Uh, but it's horrible if you if you would just want to attack. So white is weird. White is weird. Like I think I think some commons are fighting with each other. Where we have the aggressive ones, the non-aggressive ones. Usually, that equates to not the best color. So we're gonna see how that goes for white. We had a lot of uh, good sets where white was, uh, where white was good. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, if you're fast, this is really bad. If you're not, then this is pretty freaking good. Um, oh, how often are you going to be not fast? I mean, I'm going to start I it. Think the, yeah? I think the only not fast color pair in white is, is Selesnya. Is green-white. You mean fast? Yes, fast. Oh, I, I thought you said non-fast. Oh, I might have. But I think the only fast color combination is green-white. So I'm gonna give this a C plus. I think you never play this in Celestia for sure. And Me too. I'm on a C plus as well. I yeah. think there's a interest like as you were saying with the tension with the commons. I think there's an interesting tension, whereas in like there's a lot of support for the slow style of white decks, and then there's mounts. <laughs> <laughs> and then the, yeah, and then there's like kinda, cool. yeah, which is kind of interesting. Um, cool. And it, it's it's gonna be bizarre if none of the other white color combinations want mounts at all for example it's coming up but there's a 3-1 for a striking mount yeah if none of the other co colors want if sorry if the, none of the other color pairs want that and the green white just gets all of them at the table constantly then that could mean that green white is uh really really scary if people stay away from that side of white and it's just open all the time and it's kind of weird if other colors want the aggressive white cards then like a lot of white non-aggressive white cards are done <clears throat> but yeah. with this, with Holy Cow, with the gain two life and uh, kill a tapped creature, like White can get to late game. It, just the thing for me is, how much late game does White have? It's uh, I think it's gonna be have, gonna be coming from Ancomas and the other uh, the other color. Uh, but it has the tools where it can get to late game. That historically that has been a little bit weird. Because <clears throat> then you're drafting the color, but you're hoping to get support for the game plan, being the late game, uh, in this scenario, from your other colors. And you, the best thing, um, when the slower game plans work, or aggressive game plans, whatever, let's, say, uh, let's talk about slower here. You really want to have support for that part of the game in the color. On the common level. I don't think white really has great late game on white. It just has really nice tools to get there. Like trading, killing creatures, gaining life. Um, while not losing tempo. And just getting uh, to turn 7, 8, 9, 10. With a decent, a reasonable life total. So, it's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be interesting. But, historically, if you don't have support in the color... It can get a little bit weird because then you get all the, all the tools, but every slower deck is better than you. So we're gonna see. Uh, am I reading this one? Yeah, I'm gonna uh, stagecoach security. Okay, stagecoach security. A uh, four and a white, five mana total for a creature, human soldier. It's a four five. When stagecoach coach security enters the battlefield, creatures you control get plus one plus one and gain vigilance until end of turn. This is pretty large for this type of effect. Well, let him mute himself again. <laughs> but this is this is this is fairly large for this type of effect. Um, generally speaking, I don't imagine the play pattern is going to be much of plotting this and then waiting for like a huge attack. 
uh, specifically because it's a four or five. And I think you just probably play this for an extra like two extra points of damage like whenever you can. I think this is just something you just naturally curve into. That's fine. It's OK. Do I want that many of them? No. Am I clamoring for my, you know, five drops that can also be kind of sort of quote unquote cast on four? Mm, that's fine. I really do like plot in terms of smoothing out your curve. Right, I actually think that's a really good thing. Right, if you miss your fifth land drop, you can still cast your five drop, which is actually really strong. So I think all of these cards are reasonable, but nothing I'm like clamoring about. I think this is a C minus. I do mute myself, but not for you, Scotty. <laughs> oh, do you? Yeah. Oh, so all that time, okay. Yeah, I mute myself a lot of times, <laughs> but not for you. I see, I see. That makes sense. So you gave it a C minus. Yeah, okay. Yeah, C minus. This, yeah, this is but this is pretty big. Uh, <laughs> um, it's pretty big. Mm, and vision is pretty cool. Imagine this thing with you know the girl plant that is a four four, gives haste and ward. Uh, On four power, yeah. Uh, sorry, it's gives haste good. and trample to everything that has four. Yeah, this 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 determinant comes into play as a five six. Yeah, is is that a thing? Like, basically everything has trample then that you have. I mean that that usually don't splash in this kind of uh, more aggressive uh, color pairs, but uh, like gruel, I think is gonna be. But I, this seems kind of crazy with that. It is a combo, blah blah blah. But mm. you're not going okay. But let's let's go back uh, from the dreamland, even though it's just uncommon and common scenario, but but weird because you don't want to splash in fezdex. This thing is um, great if you go wide, but you don't go. You're, I don't think you're going wide. It's kind of cool. Um, yeah, I want to. I want to ask you: the presence of mercenary tokens does not necessitate a go wide strategy. True or false? I mean, not. Uh, you no, know, uh, you you do go wide when you have commons that make mercenaries. Um, white really doesn't have that, mm -hmm. so I don't know. In red, you you can go white, white for sure. You don't have to plus one, so that's like a one one is is going white. Doesn't matter if it has a good effect or not. That definitely makes you go white, but not in white really. So white on its own is not going very white. So what, what, what do you do with this? Um, <clears throat> plot is kind of cool. You get a four five. And this effect, um, C minus, you gave it? I give it a C minus. I'm okay with C minus. Yeah, I'm okay with C minus. And I, yeah, especially if you're a slower white deck, then you really don't care about this. All right, C minus it is. It's it's also kind of nice, you know, the 3 1, we're gonna get to that soon. The 3 1 mount that uh, gets first strike, then the holy cow. Like, there are some of these white commons that are not gonna die. And that have like evasion. First track is like is like evasion in the earlier parts of the game. And that's where this becomes really nice. And the three one, some some holy cows, and, and you play this. That's where it becomes pretty nice. This could be better, but let, let's give it a C minus for starters. It is a five drop. Steer clear for a white. It, it's an instant that deals two damage to target attacking or blocking creature. And it deals four damage. If you control a mo a mount as you cast this spell, so yeah, they can they can kill your mount and it's still gonna be four. Man, if you got mounts, this is hyper efficient. For two mana, four damage, pretty bad. One mana, man, that's a lot of tempo. One mana, you randomly get in and you still have a good turn. Two mana, you don't randomly get in. Man, this feels really good. Hey, this feels really good. Ceiling? Do we give it a ceiling? Because I don't like 2 damage. I really don't like 2 damage. How are you imagining the mounts deck to play out? Are you are you imagining? Because like this type of effect certainly feels more reactive. Right? Yeah. Versus... And, and you generally don't like this effect in, in decks that you want to be turning your creatures sideways. Yeah, this is awful if you don't have mounts in play. That's easy. So it's not good, but... But when you have them, so you you got a first striker, right? So they they want to double block it. You kill one of their creature, you kill the second one. 
um, you got the green for two for three that gives everything trample so this can kill something and let you deal more damage these are commons then the bigger mounts are bigger and uh, you want to they kind of have to double block them a lot of times with other colors so this works there so I mean, I'm okay with a D plus. Do, do we give it a ceiling grade though? I think I think a ceiling grade of a, of like something like a C could be totally fine. Yeah, it, it, it can potentially help your mounts deck race versus flyers or something like that, even along with making double blocks near impossible. Or does, or just give you really, I don't, I don't really good it. tempo. All right, C C as a ceiling. Yeah. yeah. What do you want? All right, C as a you ceiling. Want higher, lower? No, no, C okay. seems fine. Do I don't think I'm taking this particularly highly. I was on the D plus as well. Yeah, D plus seems fine. Sterling Keykeeper. It's a one and a white for a creature human mercenary. It's a two two with two and tap to tap target non mount creature. This is a bear with some upside. Um, tapping abilities is kind of interesting in terms of its cost to effect ratio. Uh, three mana for a tap is like super, there's like way too much. Free taps and one mana taps have generally been pretty good. Two mana is like kind of in an interesting sweet spot in the middle where it's like reasonable, I would say. Uh, however, I actually think the non-mount clause is really bad on this. Um, I think I think that's a, that's a big disadvantage. I understand why it's there because I think the play pattern, if you didn't put it there, would be miserable. Yeah. But also the fact that it's there is really tough <laughs> considering like if you're trying to tap something, pre-combat right if your opponent knows you're trying to tap some pre-combat they can just crew not crew they can just saddle whatever mount they have to just give that their effect because they you know you can't tap it down before that or you can't tap it um sorry you, you could tap it down on upkeep but like for example if they just played something on main phase one and then used it to saddle it's not like you can prevent the mount from coming in mounted it's okay. I'm not super hot on this card. I think it's a serviceable two drop. It's like a C minus for me. But I think the non mount clause is pretty big downside. I mean, it's a two mana two two. That's kind of good. It's a two, it's, 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 a, it's a bear. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Usually these guys are much smaller. They can target almost anything. But I like this. I'm gonna see. Like it's, it is a two mana two two. It has application in the late game. I'm okay with this. And it's a mercenary if you need it. Yeah. Sterling Supplier for 4 and a white. It's a 3-4 flyer that puts a plus on plus on counter on another target creature you control when it enters the battlefield. Yeah, this, they've been toying a lot with these guys. Like, uh, this condition, that condition, this condition, that condition. And this, now it's like, just have a creature, man. Just get a creature and you can do this. And this is the one that kind of wants white to be a bit faster, right? Mm. I mean, how many can you put in that? Like, white has, by the way, white has a lot of two drops. <laughs> like, a lot. Doesn't it have, like, more than, than other colors? It's like that 3 1. It's now we saw a 2 2. Then there is a 1 3 life linker. Yeah, there's three two drops. There's also that one drop, I guess. Three two drops is a lot. Mm. I don't know, man. This is nothing special. It's fine. It costs so much. It's a 5-drop. If white is super fast, this is really nice top end. Uh, also flyer, right? But uh, I don't think it is. I don't think white is super fast. So I, I'm going to start it as a C-. minus. It's a serviceable 5-drop. Okay, I'm a little bit lower. Just because um, I, ki I kind of want... But like I kind of have my eyeball more on the plot five drops that can actually fill up your curve on turn four and turn five. I actually really like I think that's like super powerful effect to the point that I think I'm gonna be desiring almost any not less flexible five drop a little less. Um it's a fine effect though. I'm a D plus. Take up the shield, one and a white, two mono total for an instant. Put a plus one plus one counter on target creature. It gains lifelink and indestructible until end of turn. This is a reprint um, of an extremely powerful combat trick. Extremely powerful. The fact that you actually gain life from combat is incredibly useful for like most racing situations for any sort of combat you want to win. Uh, anything where creatures like the only time that take up the shield is not pretty busted is um, 
a set that doesn't revolve around creature combat, which is almost none of them in modern, you know, like premier set magic. That just doesn't really happen anymore. Yeah. So I think take up the shield is phenomenal. Um, and I mean, I feel like it was like a B plus or sorry, B minus last time we saw it. Uh, and I kind of don't really see anything in particular that makes me think that it's going to be much better or worse. So I'm just going to give it a B minus. Uh, yeah, I mean, last time we saw Take Up the Shield, it was not that good. When was that? Brown. It was that was in Brothers War. No. No, so it's only it's only been one extra set. It was in Dominary United. And it's oh Dominary United. And it was not very good. Um, did did White suck there? I know I, I didn't care about it. It was not as good as the usual, but I think it's gonna be re amazing here. It's uh, what? Wait, what, are we, what are we? What are we? What are we talking about? Huh? <laughs> are we? Are we confused? No, I know that it was not as good as 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 we thought it was gonna be. I see. And uh, I can't really remember why exactly, but I, I think mean, you're comparing it to Feet of Resistance, maybe. Feet of Resistance, yeah, yeah. We we did. Yeah, compare. is that way. We did and, compare and you, it. Did like, you think it was worse than Feet of Resistance? Yeah, it was worse. But I, I think maybe okay. that was set related. I don't remember. Maybe White was pretty bad. Uh, the Feet of Resistance was amazing, but you get Lifeling here. That is so huge for for. <clears throat> For racing scenarios, it, it's, I mean, it's amazing. Um, what do you give it? I'm, I'm okay with a B minus. I gave it a B minus. Yeah, I can see it going a bit down, like a C plus. Me too, but whatever. Trained Arynx for one and white. It's a three one. It's a mount. You can settle it for two, and when it attacks while well settled, it gains first strike until end of the turn. Scry one. Yeah, this is really good. <laughs> this is really good. Um, the thing about settling early is that you, your, the creatures that you play, that have summoning sickness that you're going to settle with, cannot block. But you're getting three in with the two drop and scrying one. But that is not something to forget. Because, um, I don't know, you play a 4-4, four, four, well, that blocks basically every creature opponent has. If you settle with that, uh, you, you cannot block. So it's not... not as obvious as it seems, like you just settle all the time, that's it. Still, this is amazing. I, I'm on a C plus for this one. If um, if you're any a little bit fast, even if you're not, <laughs> even if you're not, um, yeah, this is beautiful, beautiful. You just it's so hard to block, and this three one plus the two two flying cow is what makes me think that the plus one plus one vigilance card, the creature is gonna be better, because this is gonna be surviving. At least the combat. To be honest, outlaw medic probably survives too, like because your opponent doesn't really want to kill it. Which one? The one three? The one, the one three lifelink. Yeah, I guess. But that that one also doesn't attack well. So. Yeah, that one does. <laughs> <laughs> gets the two. Uh, you, no, I'm I'm on the exact same page. I was on a C plus. It's no. really strong. Uh, you can't even sleep on the scrying too. It's yeah, actually quite nice. Like you could literally just sit on a board stall and 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 <laughs> tap a creature to saddle this to start scrying. Can you do this multiple times? Can you like if you have two two twos and train airings, can you scry one, scry one? You can, right? It's no, you have to attack text. with it. You have to yeah. attack with it. Usually it's a text, okay. right? It's, it's not like when okay, yeah, you yeah, settle yeah. it. Got it, got it, got it. Okay, so meh. that's not a great scenario, but Still C plus. Eventual townsfolk. Two and a white for a creature, human citizen. It's a three three. Whenever one or more other creatures you control die, put a plus one plus one counter on vengeful townsfolk. Uh, this effect is okay, and we've usually seen it on smaller creatures, but here we are on a three mono three three, which is actually completely fine. I think. I think in terms of three drops, looking at all the three drops that white has, um. As in, it's kind of, it's kind of only comparing to Inventive Wingsmith. I think Ventral Townsfolk is actually pretty strong. It's it's perfectly playable. I think <laughs> uh, you drop this on turn three, you attack with your whatever two drop, and then if they trade, you win. If if, if it doesn't trade, then if you're not that unhappy about it. It's a three mana three three. Any any time that one thing dies, it becomes like a four four that you only invested three mana in, which is already you're pretty happy with. I think this is just a C. Man, th this is different. 
this see this is different see okay uh, usually we get a tutu that's what this is usually this thing is a tutu three mana tutu and then we just talk like uh, yeah this one's huge yeah then then we fight the chat how no you cannot play three mana tutu that actually becomes a creature once something dies it is too slow um too many things need to go right this guy is just a three mana three three if one thing dies it's incredible while it's still alive that's like incredible just one thing dying. The more things die, of course, the better it is. And on its base, it's a 3-3. Three, three, and I love that. I think this card is amazing. I'm going to give it a C+. Um, I think this is going to be one of the better white common creatures. Man, take up the shield so good. I'm, I, <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> why, why are we going back to that? No, I'm, I'm, <laughs> Getting tons I'm, of life off of that card. Yeah, I'm, th I'm th just thinking about it. White is getting some nice things and they they don't cost a lot like yeah. okay let, let me push back slightly on vengeful townsfolk if you're suspecting right so if you're suspecting that stuff like train erinx and holy cow makes stagecoach security the plus one plus one and vigilance a little better because mm -hmm. they're bound to stick on the board more doesn't that make vengeful townsfolk worse yeah it does i don't care about that though i don't care about it because i'm doing the very i'm being i'm doing very good thing already Suspect okay. the last fair enough. Um, yeah, that doesn't matter. That means that I'm attacking without my creatures dying and I'm dealing a damage, so that's kind of cool. Sure, fair enough. Like, they, they, do you play this? They, they really don't want to trade with your two drops anymore because it's, it's too big. Like, four, four, five, five, four, three is too big. And what if this is a three, three? It's nice, that is fine, that is completely fine. Not it really. Ch it really changes the stakes of combat as soon as it hits the battlefield. Yeah. It's not Murders of Color of Manor fine. Where 3-3 three, three is... Oh my god, I got a 3-mana three 3-3, three, three, baby. We're coming back where 3-3 three, three is normal. I think that the reward is there. I would be surprised if this is really bad. I mean, it, it, this is deceptively hard to get going, right? Things are gonna die and stuff. But things dying at... at in um, in a reasonable amount of time where these plus and plus encounters matters matter it is a little bit hard but it's it's fine if they don't that's the thing and when th things start dying this just becomes incredible you're up oh wanted griffin for three and a white it's a three to flying and when he dies you make a mercenary token uh pa -pa -pa -pa, that's not good i think <laughs> okay we, we have had some flyers that make 1-1s one and they have been the best commons in the color usually on enter the battlefield effects on enter the battlefield effects this is just not a good card I wonder if chat is gonna kill me for this one this is not a good card yeah like the dead effect is so hard to activate when you want to activate it a dead effect on a flyer is so hard to activate my god um for for this one one to really matter you really want it on the etb right because at one point when this when this dies it's gonna it might not even matter uh, we had a four mana three three that investigates last time it uh, last set mkm but three threes were pretty fi fine in, in that format and uh, that's gonna be like a card draw so three threes were really nice uh, but uh, but that is gonna be extra card draw so it is gonna matter and it was a little bit how so, a little bit slower set even with boris man this is just bad uh, i don't know i'm gonna give it a d i'll give this a d plus but i don't really have any defense for wanted griff um if you do manage to trade off with it, it's like okay, but I'm not really interested in trading off my four four drop for things that are three drops or less, which is, this will do often. Kind of weird but that whatever. this Flies. card exists, uh, <laughs> isn't it? It's kind of weird. Yeah, it is. It is a little bizarre. Um, mm. It is a, a quote unquote sticky threat, you know, for your cards that care about building up a large board. There's like an uncommon that cares about the creatures in the battlefield. Stage good century kind of cares about the creatures on the battlefield. 
well, vengeful townsfolk, I guess, cares about multiple creatures. Oh. But it's it's nothing. It's really nothing. I am going out of my way for at all. I don't want to play this. You don't want to trade with your flyers. They're they're not that great at doing that. Uh, we are onto the uncommons now, and we got a spicy one first, Scotty. Okay. Uh, before I read Bounding Felidar, um, the grades on our tier list are usually in regards to how highly we see them pack one, pick one. Every single pick that you make changes how you should be evaluating cards. So the more the draft goes on, frankly speaking, the less useful the grades on the tier list get because you have to take things in context. Uh, just read, read the legend on the tier list and you're, you're going to see what every grade means. That's also going to help if you don't know. Bounding Felidar, 5 and a white. 6 mana for a creature, Cat Beast Mount. It's a 4-7. Whenever Bounding Felidar attacks while saddled, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each other creature you control. You gain 1 life for each of those creatures. Saddle, 2. Uh, this one yeah, this this one is really spicy. Uh, yeah. And when I was listening to other content creators, it, it seemed pretty divisive. Actually, not. it actually didn't seem pretty divisive, to be honest. Most people hated this. <laughs> I don't hate but, it. I kind of like it. I kind of like it. The mostly being that a four seven is huge. A four seven is huge, and I don't think it's particularly easy to block. It's not huge. Between no. take up the shield, between the the steer clear, right? There's a, there's a lot of ways to blow out combat, and once you get one attack in, in with this, this can start snowballing a big advantage. Um, I mean, it's not like, huge. I'm happy. I'm incredibly happy with getting two plus one plus counters and getting two life. That's good. That's a good effect on this card, yeah. right? Uh, you saddle with one creature, and the other creature becomes a better blocker even when you do that. Not bad. Um, it doesn't grow itself ever, so a little bit unfortunate. But I think this is a big finisher um, to the point where... I mean, it, it's a six drop, so I'm not taking it like super highly, but I'm perfectly fine putting this card in my deck. I think this is like a C. All right, first thing, I like this card as well. But four seven for six mana is not huge, man. You can't say that. <laughs> oh, it's you have to you have to you have to put so many creatures in front of it. It's like <laughs> it's not huge for a five drop. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty huge for a five drop. I don't think so. For a six drop, it's less huge. Well, I don't think it's very big uh, for a five drop <laughs> as well. I like my tree folk. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I like big wood. Big boy. Um... I mean, this effect is strong. This effect is pretty strong. Especially if you have some colors where you got, uh, I don't know, you're in maybe in Boros, and then a couple of your cards are making mercenary tokens, like maybe even a couple of your creatures are also making mercenary tokens. So, life gain is so big. It cannot be understated how huge the life gain is here. Uh, it is a 6-drop that doesn't do anything on ETB, that needs to settle when it's attacking. But the life gain is absolutely huge. Just depends, like maybe you have some flyers, some holy cows. You got, this is the thing, like I, I think this, the white can really get here. right? You got a 1-3 lifelinker, nice. You got a really good amount of early game. You got a 2-2, two, two, flying, gain 2 life, scry 1. Uh, you got enough defensive... Removal as well. Where you got these creatures that kind of gain life, stay on the battlefield. If they get removed, it's completely fine. And you get... I think you can... It's not hard, as I've said, to get to late game in white with a pretty reasonable life total. And then you play this. And if you kept those creatures alive, man... Even if, they, even if it just dies on the attacks, that's kind of fine. But if it doesn't... Oh, that's big. And... Take up the shield is common. Huh. I think for white in this set, this is going to be really good. What do you give it? I give it a C. I'm going to give it a... I cannot give this a B-, minus. I think. C+. Plus. I'm going to give it a C+. Plus. I think this works really well in white in this, in this set. Like, this is the thing. I think it's you. Totally you. You read it last. Bovine Intervention. For one and white, instant, destroy target artifact or creature. Its controller creates a 2-2 white ox creature token. This is unplayable garbage. Uh, un 
you, you can you cannot put this in your deck it's an f you cannot play this card okay. f for bovine intervention you pronounced it wrong by the way bovine um, intervention how, what, how does yeah, it bovine no no, no. You, you pronounce it correctly technically correctly Real bastard. um but it's it's weird because it's a pun that doesn't work it's a play on words that doesn't work like it's a play on divine intervention but it's bovine not oh bovine do, yeah. dovine dovine dovin intervention dovin's intervention okay um <laughs> <laughs> frontier seeker it's an f um frontier seeker one and a white for a creature human scout it's a two one when frontier seeker enters the battlefield look at the top five cards of your library you may reveal a mount creature card or planes card from among them and put them into your hand put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order uh this one's kind of interesting i actually do think this one relies on you having at least some number of mounts in your deck i'm thinking numbers wise probably like three to four which is kind of reasonable to get i think that's reasonable to get i'm actually not happy if this only can search up planes i don't oh, actually think that's what? a particularly great card yeah you, yeah you think so i don't think five is dig, dig, dig a big enough dig for nine hits on planes i actually I actually don't think so for a two one um it's like okay like i'm not particularly happy if, with this missing like what 75 percent of the, or sorry hitting 75 percent of the time uh but still i think that this is overall quite strong this is like a c plus for me so if you have nine planes in your deck it's 75 percent that you're gonna hit yes i i, I think that's kind of underrated yeah, I mean, what, you just need like Pretty four one. more mounts, and then it's yeah. like 87%? Then, then it's pretty dang good, which I don't think is that hard. I think so maybe base, I'm, it's super Maybe easy. C plus is too low. By the way, are children in my basement uh, bothering you guys? You can tell me that. I'm I mean, gonna... you, could, you, could, you could just go silence them now. Uh, if, if the chat, I kind of like the, the, the screaming, if, if the chat mm, minds okay. it. Uh... This is gonna be like <laughs> kappa kappa kappa, and in in a year, uh, just Loman uh, got arrested. Um, his chat knew it all along, so we are investigating them as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure I would definitely be investigated in that case. <laughs> and yeah, Scott was just laughing it out, and and looks kind of like a molester as well. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> you do, you do, man. You do. I'm starting to get wrinkles. I'm starting to get wrinkly, so therefore I'm a molester. What, 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 what grade did you give this? I give it a C plus. I think overall it's pretty strong. I, but this um, is amazing. I don't I, think it's like crazy good. I think this is crazy good. I, I think it's like similar to Staunch Crewmate for pirates, and this also hits planes if if, if you need it. So it's so hard to not hit. Uh, I'm on. I'm on at least a B minus for this one. In the right deck, a B or a B plus. I would say I would say in Celestia probably like a B plus or something. And it's a two mana two one. That's nice. Um, but B minus as a start as a base. That's fine. I don't think we need to give it a ceiling grade. It's pretty self-explanatory. The card is just great and in basically every deck. Getaway glamour, glamour, no. glamour. Gla what? Glamour. Glamour, okay. Uh, for a white. Only white? It's an instant spree card. So spree is a new thing that we have where you gotta pay the cost that's up there in the top right corner as always. And you can add any amount of um, extra costs. Like plus one, you get one effect. Plus one and plus two, you get both effects on this card. So it's like a model card, but you can choose all of your options. It's kind of like Escalate, if you know what, what that is. But it's every option doesn't cost exactly the same. Options have different costs, which is super cool. I I, I freaking love this. Uh, it opens up so much design space, right? Because um, if one one uh, if one option is much more powerful than the other one, then you just add. Um, bigger cost, a higher cost. That this is beautiful. So, for one plus one, you exile a non-token creature, return it to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of next and end step. 
Some things have these ETBs and they're not cast. Okay, that's cool. Uh, for one and plus two, destroy target creature if no other creature has greater power. Hey, hey kids, new kicker landed. <laughs> I mean, a kicker should be expanded on. It's People make those jokes, but it's a beautiful mechanic. Um, okay, so for three mana, you're killing the biggest thing, but... It needs to not be yours, right? <laughs> if no other creature has greater power, not same, but greater, that's a huge, that's huge, that's so huge. Uh, so it's very easy to just kill their biggest thing. Um, you can add play four to remove like your biggest thing, if it's bigger than theirs, and then just kill them. You can also end, use uh, get the ent enter the battlefield effects. Or save your creature from removal and kill, kill their thing sometimes. Man, this card is... I think this card is really, really powerful. Sure, sometimes it's gonna be awkward and stuff. Maybe you have a few big, big creatures. I think this card is uh, really, really good. Like, th this first thing on a removal spell... I'm on a... C plus or a B minus for this one. I'm gonna start it as... As a C plus. Because it can be super awkward. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm like not particularly happy with flickering my thing for no value and being able to like kill off the opponent's larger creature for four mana. That's like very much okay. I don't know how much luxury you'll have of being able to wait to get value out of the first mode to respond and also kill something else instead of just being kind of quote unquote forced to just pop this off for three mana to knock something out. I kind of feel like this is just going to not play out quite as well, but I, still, I think it's fine. I think it's fine. I'm not that much lower on it than you are. I'm going to see. It's it's it, it has a pretty dang high ceiling. I mean, there are some things that have ETBs as well, no? There are certainly some things that have ETBs, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Scotty. I just feel like it's going to play out farther away from its ceiling more often than not yeah yeah I, it, it can be a, lo a, a very awkward lassoed by the law three and a blue for four mana for an enchantment when lassoed by the law enters the battlefield exile target non-land permanent and opponent controls until lassoed by the law leaves the battlefield when lassoed by the law enters the battlefield create a mercenary creature token uh said it yesterday, I'll say it again. I think these mercenaries are actually quite good. I think being able to distribute your Mercenary extra power tokens, in combat is actually very, very, very strong. Um, and this is just a 4 mana 1-1 one, one that exiles something. That, that, that's good. This is a B for me. That, this is incredible. This is incredible. Mm, best white card we saw so far? Yeah, maybe the best white I think uh, so. common and common in in the end. I think so. Uh, B yeah, I think or so, a, actually, B or a B plus. Um, this is extremely powerful. I, um, I'm just gonna give this a B plus, man. I think this like we pick it over almost everything else. Pretty absurd. Yep. That's how powerful uh, people sometimes forget how I think I think people are kind of good at uh, understanding like adding a one one with no text to most cards makes them one of the best cards in the format. And this this one one actually has text <laughs> and it has a pretty good text for one one. So yeah. Oh, can you read the next one? I just want to check something. Sure. I'm probably going to be plus and lasted by the law. Nurturing Pixie, uh, white for a creature, fairy rogue. It's a 1-1 one, one of flying. When Nurturing Pixie enters the battlefield, return up to 1. Target non-fairy, non-land permanent. You control it to its owner's hand. If a permanent was returned this way, put a plus one, plus one counter on Nurturing Pixie. I personally, maybe I'm lacking vision, but I'm personally not seeing an archetype that's super happy about playing a 1-1-1-1 one, 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 one with flying. You know, like the hyper aggressive white deck, you know, like the miners guidewing, the the healers hawks of the format. I'm I'm not actually seeing it this set. I'm not I'm usually I'm usually big into a white one drop dorky flyers, but I'm not really a huge believer this time. Uh that being said, how important or how good is getting a one mono two two that you can bounce something and get additional value? 
You do lose a little bit of tempo. The fact that this costs one mana is kind of sort of nice. It means you don't lose too much by casting a spell. How happy am I playing like a one mana 2-2 two -two on like turn three or something? Uh, eh, 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 it's fine. Overall, I understand that there's synergies that you can't have with this card. There's certainly dream scenarios, and I think it will play out more often. Not like that. I think this is a D plus. Uh, me, I, sure, D plus seems fine. Yeah, I don't like this much. <laughs> it's kind of okay maybe to make another mercenary with some stuff. It is just one. I don't know. Not, not a big fan. Not a big fan. Uh, can you read the next one as well? Sure. Um, Omenport Vigilante. One and a white for a creature human mercenary. It's a 2-2 two -two when Omen Port Vigilante has sorry. Omenport Vigilante has double strike as long as you committed a crime this turn. Committing a crime is not that difficult. So attacking with this as a 2-2 two -two double striker is going to be pretty frequent. I think this card is very scary and quite good. Um, you know, it can't, like, we can say we can put together the dream, but it's not like you just win. If your opponent has, like, a 2-3, a your opponent could just block this and trade. No. But still, um, a pretty, pretty dang powerful bear. Pretty strong bear, and it can get out of hand. And I think for that upside, and frankly speaking, not even the worst floor in the world of being a Bear, bear. Um, I think this is a B minus. I'm on a C plus. I think it's great, but I don't think it's that yeah. easy to work to use it, use the crime, and to to double strike. I, I don't think it's that easy to to commit a crime. It's still really nice. I think it's easy to commit a crime for other cards, but not for this one. This one kind of needs you to constantly commit crimes. Um, it's a great upside, like, but I, I think it's the, it's still gonna be just a two to a good amount of times. Still, feels like a really powerful card. It's so just C+. I don't think it's much above um, other many other tutorials. Like, this is the pretty cool one. Prairie Dog. Uh, I just want to say, for these like bounce effects, blah, 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 in white, there's basically... N there is not much ETB in on common. Um, there's like the Holy Cow. That That's kind of it. Um, so... Yeah, it's 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 the, the the pixie just doesn't have much synergies, is the thing. All right, Prairie Dog, for one and a white, it's a two-two life linker. That's already good. At the beginning of your end step, if you haven't cast a spell from your hand this turn, put a plus one plus one counter on this guy. For four and a white, until end of turn, if you would put one or more plus one plus one counters on a creature, you control put that many plus one more. Okay. I mean, 2 mana 2 2 lifelinker is just good on its own. And then you can, like, if, if you're doing the thing, like not casting spells, you just uh, put some counters on it. And it also has inherent ability where you can just make it a 4 4 if you have 5 mana. Like, 5 mana upgraded to a 4 4, but it doesn't really attack that turn. I would say this is incredible. I, at least a B minus. Let's. Started as a B minus, like the minimum. I have a, I have a sp suspicion this might be actually better than Lasso by the Law. Um, this card's bonkers. As a two drop, a very important slot in your deck. But I guess unconditional removal is also a pretty important slot. Whatever. I think this is a B. I think this is a B. I think this card is a B for bonkers. I guess I can go to a B as well. It works with itself and. Uh... And just like having a 3-3 three, three lifelinker on turn 3, if you can do anything, like holy cow, literally anything on their turn for one turn, that is bonkers. It's so easy. It's, it's so easy, easy yeah. to do, you know? And it's just it's just a must-answer to drop. I don't think it's that important, because like you can do, do this, uh, have like a little bit worse turn, and then they kill this, and then you did have a, a bit worse turn, so this can lead to medium... Medium things. I know. I keep it on a B minus for me. Keep it on a B minus. I don't think you're gonna be doing this that much uh, in uh, early, but when you do, mamma mia! Prosperity Tycoon, three and a white for four mana. Yeah, four mana for a human noble. That's a four two. When Prosperity Tycoon enters the battlefield, create a one one red mercenary creature token. Uh, and pay two and sacrifice the token Prosperity Tycoon gains indestructible until end of turn. Tap it. Uh, this card is a bonkers for drop. 
super super duper strong this card is actually something that makes a one one that has well one one on etb you know just straight up you just get that for free i really like the mercenaries i really like that this can potentially just threat of activation of protecting itself while attacking is incredibly good uh honestly it's really high for a four drop i also think this is a v i think this card is really really good crazy crazy powerful Crazy powerful. Just like a Forto that makes this 1-1 one, one is enough, and it also has an extra effect. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. B? I think it's not a B+. Let's, let's, let's keep it as a B, but it's close. It's, it, it's close. Requisition rate for White and Spree. Plus 1. Distort card and Artifact. Plus 1. Destroy target en enchantment. Plus one. Put a plus one plus one counter on each creature target player controls. All right. Two mana. You put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. Uh, unless you want to commit a crime. Uh, it's... Uh, maybe we want to do that sometimes. <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> Gosh. I mean, it's... Opponent is on two life and uh, you have some... I don't know. Anyways. Uh, but one time in billion drafts. Sure. Yeah, they're gonna do this. Wait, two mana put a plus and plus and counter on every creature you control is nothing special. But having an option to also kill artifacts, to also kill enchantments, I mean, this is really good. This is the thing they've been talking about. Adding modality to naturalize, adding modality to these con very conditional cards. Yeah. Man, this is nice. This is nice. Um... Pro this is beautiful, actually. <laughs> I'm gonna like C plus for this one. It kills all the three color uh, enchantments, uh, rares and mythics. That's refreshing. A lot of the takes I heard about this kind of hated it. Um, for specifically, none of the modes being particularly impactful. But I kind of, I kind of, I kind of do think that they are. I kind of think that they're perfectly fine. Um, to the point where I'm fine main decking this. I'm, a little, I'm a, even a little bit lower than you are. I'm going to see. But I think just having the baseline mode of putting plus one, plus one counter on each creature, that's nothing special, as you said. But it's also not blank cardboard. You know, it's it's not dead. No. It's okay. It's like an okay effect. Um, and just tacking additional value on top of that, kind of in. Let's see for me. Uh, go, give it a C for me as well. But also give it a... Cyborg grid, right? This is perfect for a sure. cyborg card. Because even if, like, you get, even if, usually when you have, uh, maybe you're not playing this in your deck, uh, but if they have, like, one artifact or enchantment that you want to get rid of, you just put it in, and it's fine, because you can always use the, the last one. There is, uh, you know, when we talked about, like, these enchantments uh, being maybe a little bit easier to remove sometimes, uh, there is a green tutu. We're going to get to that in probably 30 minutes uh, <laughs> there is a green tutu uh, that just sacrifices itself to kill an artifact or enchantment so that's gonna be a bit weird um, yeah I, C seems fine C actually seems fine I was a little bit too hyped on it we had sets with so many artifacts and enchantments this one is not the same I think you're not gonna have the same amount of artifacts and enchantments in it Rustler Rampage white for an instant with spree uh, one mana, untap all creatures target player controls, one mana target creature gains double strike until end of turn uh, I kind of hate this I kind of hate combat tricks that don't affect power toughness like it really narrows the amount of combats you can actually win, I don't really care that it's a surprise I understand you can have the whole upside of surprising your entire opponent's entire board. We've seen effects like this, and people always think about the dream scenarios of, like, you line up with the perfect combat, you know, you blow your opponent out, you eat your opponent's entire board, which, uh, as much as I like to dream, doesn't happen nearly as often as you desperately trying to finagle combat where you can even get turn this into a one-for-one. -one. Um, so I'm not into it, honestly. Um, sure, you can target your opponent's stuff with crime, blah, blah, blah. Don't really care. I think this is a D. Yeah, I can fuck off with this one. I, don't, I think it's horrible. I'm gonna give it a D minus, but I don't think you play this in your decks. Just okay, double strike is, is crap. It's it's crap, really bad. You want some stats. You want to win some combat, not just 
Yeah, fuck off. I mean, I, I think it's uh, it it's probably unplayable. Probably. This probably never ever makes the deck. But I guess D minus something happened. I don't know. Back. Yeah, uh, give it an F. You can give it an F. I'll give it an F. I'm gonna give it a D minus. It's like back two. You open the bomb. Uh, you switched for from your most picked color for some reason. I guess you can put it in. It's 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 not unplayable. It's just bad. Horrible. Shepherd of the clouds. You're a good boy for four and a white. It's a four three flying vigilance Pegasus. When this guy enters the battlefield, return target permanent card with mana value three or less from your graveyard to your hand. Return that card to the battlefield instead if you control a mount, which I don't think is gonna be hard. Mm. And just a 4-3 flyer drawing your card basically most of the time is good. That's already good. Putting it on a battlefield is completely broken if that's what's gonna happen. You put a 2-drop on it. No, it doesn't have to be a 3-drop. You put a 2-drop on the battlefield, it's broken. Broken 5-drop. If that's gonna be what you do. Putting it in your hand, pretty good, yeah, that's nice. This is incredible. It is a 5-drop though, I'm gonna give it like a straight up B. This is so good. Yeah, this card's fantastic. Um, technically, it's a hoop to jump through to have a creature in the or something in the graveyard in the first place, technically. Not a huge hoop. Uh, the Mount Clause is also another hoop, so I'm a little bit lower. So I'm on a B-, minus just for a couple of conditional effects here, but I think it's very powerful. Yeah, Tom Turbo, that's exactly what I've been thinking. Like, white uncommons are pretty damn good. <laughs> They're really, really powerful. Uh, oh, yeah, this is me. This is Sheriff of Safe Passage, two and a white for a, a creature human knight. It's a zero, zero. And Sheriff of Safe Passage, sorry, Sheriff of Safe Pat. This card enters the battlefield with a plus one, plus one counter on it, plus an additional plus one, plus one counter on it for each other creature you control and it has plot one in a white that's <laughs> so bizarre sorry that first paragraph is really bizarrely worded um let's break this down if you cast this on an empty board it's a one one if you cast this with one additional it just it's equal to the number of creatures on the battlefield wow right? whoa whoa what a breakdown well that's a professional yeah, player yeah. everybody well, I mean, like, it, it, it's it's worded in a weird way. Like, we haven't seen it worded like this. So, it's I don't know why it's worded like this. Let's but break it down. That's, that's what it does. Um, so, it's just equal to the number of creatures you control. Um, I think this card is actually fine. Like, it doesn't look that good, but the fact that it's your two-drop, right? It, it goes in your two-drop slot, and you will affect the board later. I think that's, like, an okay card. I think that's, like, perfectly okay. I'm still not going to give it, like, a super high grade. I think that's, like, a C-, minus, but it's a bear. You can't block with it on turn two, but I'm kind of sort of okay with that. And it has potential, much higher upside later. So I think this is like a C minus for me. Yeah, I'm kind of okay with this as well. Um, the plot for two is huge, obviously. So if you have some one drop, that's very important. Um, if you're in Boros, maybe you're playing creatures that make more creatures, that's huge. Like just having it as a, if you can have it as a three three on turn three, so that's gonna be happening sometimes. That is incredible. Without it, wow! You've built shit. you've built your own mob. <laughs> oh, we built your own. You, you've built your own ventral town folk. Clap clap clap. <laughs> I mean, two mana three three is uh, really good. But I guess yeah, it's two mana. The, mm, I'm actually gonna give this uh, C. When you're curving out, I think it's really nice um and again later on as well white creatures i think are not going to be dying that that easily no uh, so yeah it's okay a little bit slow sometimes horrible <laughs> so just to see nothing too crazy i like other white uncommons um people envision the best case scenario but a lot of times it's gonna be i mean if even if you just play it as a 2-2 right uh that comes in late it's it's not the end of the world, right? You plot it for two, you play a creature, you get it seen. It's a two-two, it's fine. I think this is the first card we've seen that you can really just gauge how badly you need that stats on the battlefield, right? And like it actually just, you can manipulate combat uh, or you can manipulate your attacks and just not trade off in order to actually have something that stabilizes you better. No, a lot of the card, a lot of the play patterns of the plot cards I've seen is like you plot it next to and you cast it, right? And I can actually see this one just being delayed for much, much, much longer. 
and then you have that one big turn where okay yeah now i take the board yeah. hopefully <clears throat> Thunderlust. And honestly speaking, oh sorry, sorry. No, no, <laughs> I'm just gonna say one thing. Honestly speaking, I kind of hate that effect. Like I kind of, yeah. I kind of, uh, like what we just described is not a good card. But I'm yeah. only okay with it because it costs only two mana to start. Yeah. Like yeah. the two mana plot is huge. If it was plot for three mana, I think this card would be actually unplayable. And 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 and, it, and it's also huge. The just the plot, not not only the mana cost. It's these cards you gotta keep in your hand, keep in your hand, have bad turns, missed turns, and so on, and then you gotta pay the mana to cast them. And then you're not casting something else. Like, if this doesn't have plot, uh, even if it's just two mana to cast, I think it becomes worse. Like, if this costs two mana to cast, no plot, I think it's very, very bad. Uh, it is a very, very bad card. But just because you can pay two and not cast it and then just choose the right moment and not lose tempo on that turn, still play out your other creatures, I think that's that's the big part. So this card for two mana, no plot, usually it's a better card, right, for anything else, but for this one, not really. So it's not amazing, but just uh, interesting, very interesting design here. Thunder Lesso, for two and a white, it's an equipment. When it enters the battlefield, you attach it to target creature you control. Equipped creature gets plus one plus one, and whenever it attacks, um, it, you tap target creature defending player controls, and you equip for two. Alright, so you do commit a crime for some things, I guess. Um, kind of cool in Orzov, probably. Oh yeah, this one a 2-2 two -two double striker, my god. Right, that's a 3-3 three -three double striker that taps everything, you equip it for two. If this thing would not equip itself, it would be unplayable, but it does equip itself. So it's playable. <laughs> <laughs> there we are with the hard hitting analysis. <laughs> oh, yeah, we, we, we're on, on We've demonstrated today. basic logic, yeah. <laughs> um, if you do end up in a bit of aggressive deck, but I don't think that's going to be the case for white a lot of times. This is... I'm gonna start it as a C-, minus. I think. I'm like a little bit higher. I actually think that even even putting aside wombo combos like Omen Port Vigilante, um, and even putting aside a hyper-aggressive deck, th this actually just enables you to make really nightmarish attacks. Or really, sorry, yeah. it makes your blo opponent's blocks really nightmarish. Um, so I'm kind of in. I'm kind of in for a C. Okay. And as Lola said before, it, it commits a crime every every time you attack. Which I think matters. For free, for, for no mana after you equip it. I think that's like Boros. Uh, sorry, uh, Orzo. I think that's yeah. like Orzo thing. Like, I'd be pretty happy with this in green-white, to be honest, because I just want to turn my yeah, creature sideways. Yeah. I mean the crime so, part. I think this has, this has homes. I meant the crime part. I see, I see, I see. Right, we're done with the uncommons. Extremely powerful uncommons in white. Uh, extremely powerful. It's, it's like commons feel like a lot of commons feel like what, whatever compared to these uncommons, man. And now we're on to the rares and mythics, Scotty. Another round XX, two and a white for a sorcery. Exile any number of creatures you control, then return them to the battlefield under their owner's control. Repeat this process X more times. I kind of don't care about how many ETBs are in the set. This is extremely conditional. Um, not just on what your deck looks like, but what the board looks like and how what the game state is to actually preserve those ETP creatures. So this is an F. And I want to move on with my life. And now there's nothing to talk about. Because <laughs> we finished already. Maybe we should have started on a more interesting card. Don't stretch with water in hand. But it's... But it's fine if you do. You know what else I do sometimes? Another round. Oh, that's what I need for my life. Uh, you know what I do sometimes as well, but much rarely. Like I, lately, I didn't do it for like months. Um, so you know how when you're drinking something, like coffee or water, mm -hmm. you put it in your mouth and then you tilt. So because it's a liquid, so it can uh, transfer from the cup to your mouth. Well, 
what I do sometimes, but not in months, is like, I tilt it before I put it in my mouth. And, and then it doesn't go in your mouth, then it goes on you. So don't do that. What grade did you give this? An F. F? Yeah, man, this, this is, yeah, it's, this can, like, mm -hmm. this can do st the thing sometimes. So, too much conditions, an F, it's way, way too much conditions for this to be good, yeah. Sorcery speed as well, no. How many holy cows <clears throat> would have to be in your deck for you to play another round? I mean, what, what if you have two on your battlefield, uh... You pay five to get what eight life and scry four. Man, that is horrible. That's that, no. That, <laughs> there is no no. I don't even want to do this with holy cow. Yeah. <laughs> um, maybe no 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 maybe's no maybe's no 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 prickly pears. No. <laughs> You're just trying to make the card not unplayable. It doesn't even make it good in those prickly pears or whatever scenarios. Uh, but we have Archangel of Tithes. Is it Tithes? Tithes, yeah. Okay. For one and triple white, that's four in total. You get a flying 3-5. As long as these guys untapped, creatures cannot attack you or Planeswalker you control unless their controller pays one for each of those creatures. As long as this guy is attacking, creatures cannot block unless his controller pays one for each of those creatures. Man! This is a hard thing to cast, but it's fucking worth it. Magic tips good, liquid tips better. You don't, you never know what you're gonna learn here. You never know. You never know. Um, hmm. I mean, okay. I'm I'm happy with paying with play, playing this later in the game once I finally get triple white. Your opponent is gonna have a super hard time attacking, and then you're gonna know exactly with how many things they can block. And like. If they're gonna keep, if, they, if they're gonna tap out, you're just like, boom, let's go. Holy moly, this is really good. This is amazing. Um, is this a B? I think it's just a B plus without, but because of the prohibitive cost. But I, I'm even with triple white, I, I'm okay with the B, B, B plus. Ties. <laughs> Archangel Tithe, this is a reprint. I'm okay with it. Um, I'm a little bit lower, mostly because the delay in terms of how difficult it is to cast can sometimes mean that your opponent has excess mana by the time that this actually starts tussling in combat or affecting combat. So I found that to be a little awkward. Uh, it's still a 3-5 flyer. Um, it's it's good. It's a good card. I'm on a B. Okay. Mm. Aven Interrupter. One white white for three mana for a creature bird rogue. It's a 2-2 with flash and flying. When Aven Interrupter enters the battlefield, exile target spell, it becomes plotted. Spells your opponents cast from graveyards or from exile cost two more to cast. Uh, am I a stupid person for saying that? I think Holy Cow is better than yes. this. Oh. I think Holy Cow is better than this. Um, I'm not particularly interested in... I mean, sir, sure, bouncing, bouncing, quote unquote, bouncing your opponent's spell. Fine. That's a fine effect. It's not to be slept on that this is harder to cast. So you will have a fail case. Uh, I think typically in an 8 9 split or a 9 8 split of uh, mana, having an extra blip means that you can cast it like with like about 12% less consistency, which is like super brutal. Um, rough, rough life. I think this card is fine, though. I, I think this card is okay to the point i think it's um i i really do hate the idea of passing on turn three and having to flash this in with no target <laughs> or wanting to flash this in with no target but i think it's a c i mean they just need to play something yeah just anything right i mean they can't plot though if they plot it you if they plot on turn three i mean i guess i guess you have to you tax their plot you tax their plot yeah yeah that's like super fine yeah. they plot yeah, that's super fine. That's super fine. Yeah. How good is it for you? That's a C. Mm, so delay their thing for one turn. It could even be a trick. <laughs> it could even be a trick. Or, tricks or are really, really good. Yeah, like no, tr this. This destroys tricks. Yeah, you you mess their turns up really badly. 
You actually get a two for one if it's a trick. Yeah. And then they gotta pay more? Man, this is... Uh... Wait, and you can play plotted things only as sorcery, so... Yep. And Any it... counterspell is now dead. Counterspell is dead. The tri tricks are basically dead. Man, I'm gonna see plus for this one. This is... Uh... I think this is really good. It's, it's great tempo. This is great tempo. You make them pay two more later, and if, if they have more plotted things, oh my god, that's a problem. Yeah, I actually really like the fact that it affects more plotted stuff. Yeah. But even without it, like I'm, I'm, I'm putting that yeah. kind of sideways. Um, sideways, it's attacking. What? Uh, I, I'm. I, I don't care that much about that part. Uh, it's, it's like it's so good that it's there. It's gonna destroy some games. But even without it, as a floor, you're delaying the card they're playing for one turn, which can be extremely problematic for their turn for the, what they envision to do. And you make it them pay two more. Which basically means this co the, I mean, kind of means that this costs one mana. Not really, but kind of. Yeah, I, 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 I'm going to be honest. I was like updating the tier list for a second, and then you said it kind of means that this costs one mana, and I have no idea how we logic to get there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how we got there. <laughs> it's, it's like you make them pay two more, right? So you're paying uh -huh, three yeah. mana for this, but you make them pay two more. So you're kind of like paying one mana for this when, when you uh, do the equation in the end. In those developing turns where uh, every point of mana matters. Man, this yeah, is I so like my, I, my, I like my I like my one drop elite spellbinder. Yeah. I, I want to be minus, man. I want to be minus. Th this okay. really messes up their turn. Uh, that one turn, it really messes it up. It messes up their tempo on the following turn. And God forbid if you counter the trick or a counter spell, which is hor nothing on, which is really crappy, on as a sorcery speed. Any trick is now nothing as a sorcery speed. And those things they really needed to play them then. Man, this is amazing. This is a B minus. This is wow, wow, wow. I th I think the best I think uh, I think the best part about this card, frankly, by far, is the fact that it sits on the battlefield and taxes plots naturally. I think that's just an extra like. You, you play something, whatever it is, part. you play a forward or something, you really wanted it to hit the battlefield now. And then next turn you got you you have a plan, but now if you're going to play that thing, and you probably got it, you're paying two extra. Oof. Even if it's just a two drop, I mean, I think it's at least a B minus. Beautiful card. By the way, I saw Reed Duke having a deck with nine rares, and like few rares in the sideboard, in his Celestia deck. Uh, and I saw some seal packs being open, and there was like a lot more rares. Is there like more rares than in the previous set in MKM? Because it's just kind of weird. Um, uh, there's still the wild card slot. The breaking news slot can be a rare. Big score means one out of five packs will be a mythic rare. Hmm. Anyways, uh, in, instead of a common, so. Okay, we're gonna see. So yeah, I think so. More rares. I think so. Yeah, it, feel, it felt like that. It really did feel, feel like that. Claim jump. Feels like it's twenty percent more rares. Twenty percent more. Okay, then the last set. I think. I think so. Okay. Uh, claim jumper for two and a white is a three three vigilance mercenary. When this guy enters the battlefield, if an opponent controls the usual effect, right? If the opponent controls more lands than you, you may search your library for a planes card and put it on the battlefield tapped. Then, if a, if an opponent controls more lands than you, repeat this process once. Which means you can repeat it infinite amount of times uh, until you get to the point where you have the same amount of lands as them. Which is kind of cool. Which is kind of cool. I mean, imagine you're screwed and... Uh, I mean, this is not what's, what's going to happen most of the time. But this actually does get you completely unscrewed. And you can kind of get com very back in the game. But usually it's going to be like... Uh, you're on the draw, you play your other 3-drop, Oppon opponent plays the 4th land, you play this, and you get a land in. You can only find 2 lands max. No, th that's not true, right? Because you repeat it once every time. Do do doesn't, oh. is, isn't the repeat this process once only here to safeguard... So, uh, so, so, isn't it just a wording? No? Wait, isn't it just a wording so you don't repeat it billion times if, if they just have one more land? It's like... 
Repeat this process. I think you I think you can only get two lands max. Oh, only two lands. I mean it doesn't matter. I mean you're gonna be getting one basically Oh okay, okay, okay. I, I I thought it was just a safeguard. Uh just the wording. For planes card. This will be the desert bounce land. Oh man. Oh, that's really it's really good with the Erd Mesa <laughs> or whatever. Oh man, yeah, this is called... oh that's really good. Sheesh, this will be the bounce land, yeah man, wow. Oh. Okay, anyways, it's a good card. It's a 3 3 Vigilance, that's fine. Something's gonna be more than that. C, plus, I like it. Yeah, C, plus sounds good to me. Hmm. Pretty dang good card. Good card, nothing special. Good stuff. Dust Animus, one white for uh, two mana for a creature spirit. It's a 2 3 with flying. If you control five or more untapped lands, Dust Animus enters the battlefield with two plus one plus one counters and a lifelink counter. Has plot one and a white. So. Uh, if you cast this with seven lands, this will be a four, five with flying and lifelink. If you plot this on turn two and then unplot it on turn five, it's a four, five flying lifelink. If you absolutely need to cast this beforehand, it's a two mana, two, three flying. Every single one of these modes is very, 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 very strong. Um, super hyper efficient. Um, very good. I like it a lot, actually. Uh, really good to splash too, because like it's not like you need to invest a lot of white into this, right? You just finally find your planes, and all of a sudden you have five other untapped lands. And there's your four or five with lifelink. Uh, super have, good uh... stuff. But what do you think? What is this? Um, I think it's a B plus. I'm on an A minus. I, mean, I think it's a bomb. It's like because there's a flexibility, yeah. right? Two mana, two three flying is one of the best two drops in the game, for sure. Yeah, I don't know what I'm. I don't know what I'm asking for out of a two drop. It's... Yeah. And, and then makes more sense. two mana earlier, and then once you get the five lands, you don't even pay five, right? Even if you did pay five, a four five life linker with flying is the game ends unless it dies. Basically, always the game ends unless it dies. But the beautiful thing is you you can just play it on two. And even more beautiful thing is this is not a five drop that ends the game. This is a two drop. <laughs> it you pay two mana. You never pay five. You pay two mana. So yeah, A minus is beautiful. Final showdown for a white. Now get this. Instant. This is an instant. It has pre. For plus three and double white, you destroy all creatures. So six mana, instant speed, destroy all creatures. For plus one. Choose a creature you control, it gains indestructible until end of turn. For plus one more, all creatures lose all abilities until end of turn. <clears throat> what is this skill for, for lose all abilities? Is there something that this kills? Um, it means that the 3-2 flying common doesn't make a mercenary. No, what... Oh, like, like straight up, do you want it to kill something? What does it kill for two mana, yeah. Uh, it kills... Does it kill... The tumbleweed token? No, it doesn't. No, no, it's tumbleweed token is, counters. is counters, right? It needs to be. Are, something is this, a, is this has... a rhetorical question? I think there is something. I think I remembered something that's like an X X. Oh, the bow token. The 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 bow the bow's ox blue ox it kills that. Uh, that token is from the most broken card in the set, the, right? The busted the yeah the oh, bonnie cares, bonnie yeah, that's rare. Not nothing. Yeah. That's nothing. Uh, <laughs> Um, okay, anyways, six mana, triple white, that's uh, not that easy to get, uh, well, like, sometimes you gotta wait a bit more, but instant speed, board vibe, man. And for seven mana, you are keeping the, your biggest creature, right, at instant speed. Man, this is a bomb, this is a bomb, okay, the instant speed board vibe, I have never seen this, and don't you tell me about... Um, oh my god, I can't, can't, can't believe that I can't remember the four double white and two. Uh, exile all attacking creatures. I can't believe I can't remember the name. Settle the wreckage. Settle the wreckage, yeah. Settle the wreckage. No, that's not an instant speed board wipe. Uh, so. Lola's two zoomer for route. Lola's two zoomer for route. Two zoomer for route. It's. Yeah. What is route? Give me the link. Uh, route? It's like a 5 mana with kickers or something? So, okay, 6 mana, destroy everything. 7 mana, keep your biggest, best thing and destroy everything else. 
Also, for two mana, it can be a trick with indestructible, right? Man, this is so good. Wow, I don't didn't think I don't think that the board wipes need modality. This is incredible. This is incredible. So usually board wipes when you're ahead, they are not great. This thing, when you're ahead, you can give something indestructible. You can just give something indestructible. Maybe losing abilities matters, but you can give something indestructible for two. That's something that board webs never do. They don't let you keep the advantage. They let you get back. For seven mana, it's a one, kind of one-sided board wipe. That's crazy powerful. For six mana, it's instant speed, man. That is so huge. So you are going to be the first one who develops back. This never happens. Except with route, we all know. Uh, this never happens. It's like... You use it on the end step, and you're the one who's developing first. That is has always been a problem with board wipes. Not that they're bad, but opponent develops first. Are you gonna be okay? You already lost some life because you're playing the board wipe. So are you gonna be okay? Are you gonna be getting back? This is just a straight up bomb. I'm gonna give it an A, at least. I think this is an A. Yeah. This card is pretty bonkers. The best part is 7 mana, but 6 mana is amazing because it's instant speed, and then 2 mana is really nice backup to have. Just indestructible. Yeah, very, very nice. Wow, what a card. I can't, I can't, I can't believe this is a combat trick. <laughs> yeah, that's a combat fucking trick, what the hell? <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know why I didn't register that. It's like, oh my god, this is just too bad a combat trick. I've been talking about it for so long, god damn it, man. <laughs> I mean, I just, I just, it's a bomb, so I tuned out. Um, Fortune Loyal Steed. Uh, it's a two and a white for three mono. A legendary creature beast mount. It's a two four. Uh, when fortune loyal steed enters the battlefield, scry two. Whenever fortune attacks while saddled at the end of combat, exile it, and up to one creature that saddled it this turn, then return those cards to the battlefield under their owner's control. Uh, three mana, two four. Scry two when enters the battlefield. That's like the most part of this card. It's fine. That's fine. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. And the fact that if you do have an Enter the Battlefield effect, you can start flickering it. That's also fine, you know? Like, with another round, I'm not happy about it because it does nothing on its own. But this is actually totally fine on its own. And any single ETB that you have now becomes a very large threat. So, pretty high upside. Uh, I like it. I like it a decent amount. I think this is a B-. I don't know, man. It's a 2-4. That's a problem. Like, how, how is this? this doesn't attack that well. Uh, at the end really of combat, you can attack attack that well. It's just a two four. I'm I'm on a. It doesn't attack that well. You're right. Yeah. So like, it's more like two four scry two maybe something else. Mm. I'm not gonna C or C plus maybe. And let's start it as a C plus. I can see it going down. High noon for one and a white enchantment. Each player cannot cast more than one spell each turn for four. And red, sacrifice this thing, it deals 5 damage to any target. No, 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 just don't play it, F, F, no. Mm. 5 damage, 5 to any target. Seven. So total. 4 and a red, 5 damage, 5 to any target, what grid would you give that? 4 and a red? Just like instant, sorcery? Uh, an instant. Instant? It's an instant. Uh, it's not very good. It's a card. It's it goes fine. face. Yeah, sure. It's okay. Ooh. It's fine. It's fine. Ooh, I like that a lot more than fine. Yeah, it's it's, it's or kind of rather good. no, it's it's fine. It's fine. It's like it's like a C fine for me. Yeah, it's like a C fine. But this is two mana initially, and it's white, yeah. and you need to have red as well. Mm -hmm. Like so, you're on an F. Yeah, on an F. I'm on a D minus. <laughs> <laughs> it's horrible. Would horrible. you ever sideboard this in versus your opponent's is it deck? No. Okay. You do not. <laughs> and they say, oh nice, they sideboard this in. They think that's good actually for against my deck. <laughs> oh, is this me? One last job. Two and a white for a sorcery spree. We should have done white last. That's okay. Why? That would have been so flavorful to read this as the last card of our set review. Oh. Well, that's all right. Yeah, one last job. Um, We're done after this one. We're done. It's over. <laughs> All right, let's just let's we just cut off the server. We're <laughs> done. We can do it. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> two and a white for three mana and a sorcery has spree plus two mana return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield plus one mana return target mount or vehicle card from your graveyard to the battlefield plus one mana return target aura or equipment card from your graveyard to the battlefield attached to a creature you control last ability i don't see being used that that often I, I don't think your equipments will die particularly often uh for most common mode will be five mana return something from the graveyard to the battlefield how good is that that's pretty bad um so i'm most interested in is six mana return two things to the battlefield no yeah. mounts not that difficult to find and return back right and then just any other creature on top of that not that bad either how good is six mana return two creatures from the graveyard to the battlefield pretty good that is pretty decent that's pretty mm. decent and i don't think that the mount clause is that huge of a hoop to jump through um that being said this type of sort of conditional effect and not an absolutely overwhelming like i win you know like i'm totally going to dominate this game because i paid six mana uh it's okay i think it's like a c you can do four. You can pay four or five sometimes. That's nice. You can pay four or five. That's true. It, it does have a much better bailout um, because you can cast this on the cheap. Four mana to get your best mount back from the graveyard is also yeah. That's that's pretty. It's pretty good upside. Yeah. I I'm, I like this um, C plus. What do you give it? I give it C. Yeah, I think it's nice. Yeah, that okay. should have been the last card in set, but can't do that. Okay, um, White has been interesting, not just uh, aggressive two drops and that's it. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Next up we got Blue and we are starting with Daring Thunder Thief. For three and a blue, it's a 4-4 four, four with flash, it's a rogue and it enters the battlefield tapped.